I got an email and um, I couldn't believe it. I was talking to my, I think I was talking to my mom and my sister or one or the other or my dad, someone on like G video chat or on the phone, I don't know. Um, and I, I saw the email at the same time and I told them, oh my goodness, <laughs> I have to tell you something. said that I was chosen as one of uh, ASCE's new faces of civil engineering. Why do I think I received this honor? Um, I think I think it's probably in part because of my unique background. I think that it's interesting to uh, to kind of dive into this idea that you can have a background in full force in the arts and then you can complete a, a full 180 to go on the more math, science, civil engineering uh, track. It's something that universities, I think, are are finding right now in their students. As well, I, I know in Northwestern, at least, there's this whole push for whole-brained engineering. So I think it's that left brain, right brain, arts to science combination. It made me very happy. Um, I'm extremely honored to have been um, selected as one of the new faces of civil engineering, um, it, mean, it means a great deal. I, I think it's incredible to be recognized by ASCE and to be a part of Engineers Week this year. Um, I was very excited <laughs> and very honored. I was trained Vaganova at the Herod Conservatory. Um, and uh, that's a ballet boarding school in Florida. And then I danced professionally with Colorado Ballet in Denver and Tulsa Ballet in Tulsa. Uh, and after that, I, I decided I wanted to go back to school. And um, it was a very difficult decision for a, what, 19 or 20 year old myself because um, I had been out of college, um, out of high school for a couple years and uh, been working full time as a ballet dancer. So I, I just made the decision to stop and um, go get my bachelor's. <laughs> so um, and then the following decision was to do engineering. What does an engineer look like? Right? Like there, there can't be one, you know, <laughs> I mean, the the majority is is male, if that you know, and I think that not and then in, so the minority is women from that, and then the more minority is former ballet dancers. There are some more. I have met some or heard of some, so that's always um, an exciting thing. Why did you leave ballet? <laughs> That's a difficult question because um, there's so many answers. <laughs> Maybe it's a little uh, less common of a move, but um, I think it's unique in a good way and I think that it's something that makes my life even more exciting than it would have been if I had taken a direct path to one or the other. Going to college and studying civil engineering was one of the best ideas that I ever had. In the process of creating my fellowship research proposal, I, I really found something that resonates with me, which is taking that understanding of motion and movement through space, which I have a keen understanding of from ballet and my background in dance and performing arts, and being able to recognize and see that in the structures around us. For example, the turning torso building that goes like this, um, uh, Gary's um, Dance Embrace building. When you're a ballet dancer, you can affect people in, in that you can bring them happiness or sadness or joy or whatever the art or the, the choreography that you're performing brings. But I wanted to be able to affect people in a new, different way. And that's why uh, civil engineering is so perfect for me because I can. I can affect uh, more than just um, the emotions of the people watching, but I can um, affect 
space in the built world around us. Mehri is a very difficult name to say, um, especially at first. Um, it's Persian. Uh, my dad is from Iran and my mom's from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, so they named me a Persian name. Um, Mehri is Persian, and my last name, Paidar, is Persian too, obviously. Iran is um, a beautiful place um, in terms of history and culture. Um, and when I went, I went to go visit my grandmother. It's a, a difficult place to visit. There's, I mean, obvious conflicts between here and there. It's hard to, to make any, you know, realistic hopes, but I hope that they become friends <laughs> and that, you know, everybody makes up, <laughs> you know, that would be wonderful. <laughs> I have family there that I want to stay safe, so. Global Architecture Brigades the group that I was in, in uh, at Northwestern, I co-founded it with one of my friends. We took our engineering skills and went to a developing country, we went to Honduras, and we were able to help build a school. It was an, a pretty short trip, it was about nine days, and uh, from the start we, you know, we were all excited to be a part of this, um, to see a new place, to meet new people, to meet a new culture, and to really be immersed in it uh, was incredible in itself. And then, I mean, from day to day we woke up very early and we took an hour and a half van ride up a what was really rocky road and um, going up the, to the top of this hill where the the school was it was an incredibly beautiful setting I mean passing the sugar cane uh, and all the different types of vegetation it was beautiful but at the same time it was it was sad because the the roads were so uh, in need of help just being in their presence and really seeing how they live uh, was, I think, the most incredible experience for the whole group. Of course, we helped build the school, we put the walls together, made the floors, and really got to learn a lot about um, construction techniques in that way, uh, but I think that seeing the impact that we could have and experiencing the impact that they had on us was uh, the most valuable part of it. I went to Berlin for this um, this week-long workshop where we, um, me and a few other students from Northwestern, we were able to work alongside Helmut Jan, who's an amazing architect. There were too many of us, I guess, to, to fit in the, in the main area, so two of us had to go sit um, right at Helmut Jan's desk. When we came back, we organized a symposium. Um, which would discuss those sustainability techniques and the findings that we that we made on the trip. I've always loved uh, math science. I it resonates with me. I connects was my toy of choice. I I love building things, Legos, Lincoln Logs, you name it. <laughs> that was my you know Frank Lloyd Wright you know architecture toys for Christmas was awesome. Now instead of connects, it's steel beams and concrete. What's my favorite part of being a civil engineer? <laughs> um, that's, uh, I mean, there's so much, but my, my favorite part is the impact that, that I can have on society. You create things that will hopefully last for, for ages, for, you know, for a long time, uh, years, um, and that's something that will impact society past past the designers themselves. The position I'm at right now is uh, a co-op internship, so it's actually coming to a close. Working on such an incredibly big train system that affects, I mean, a million people a day, um, it's an incredible uh, project to be a part of. I hope that whatever projects I work on, whether I'm doing the, the project management and coordinating for it, or if I'm, I've, des I've designed the structure for it, or whatever it may be, I hope that the projects that I've been involved in 
last and that society sees them as something that they can appreciate and hold near to them, I think that that would be a great legacy to have. Stage battle? <laughs> I'm an engineer. I'm a ballerina too. <laughs>